Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Joshua Paolillo. Josh earned his bachelor's in chemistry at the University of Connecticut, where he carried out undergraduate research on oxoammonium salts and photocatalysis under the supervision of Professor Nicholas Ledbeater. He subsequently worked as a scientist at Beringer Ingelheim for two years before coming to NYU, where he's currently pursuing his PhD in the group of Professor Marvin Parisram. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Josh. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for the introduction and for inviting me to present today. I'm excited to share our lab's most recent work on the photo-induced hydroxylation of alkanes using nitroarenes. Oxygen-containing functional groups are found widely in natural products, pharmaceuticals, and agrochemicals and many well-known bioactive molecules, such as steroids, biogenic amines, and opioids, all contain one or more hydroxyl groups. Due to the need for protecting groups to carry alcohols through total syntheses, which adds steps and lowers yields, direct installation of hydroxyl groups via CH hydroxylation has been a highly sought-after transformation. Due to the strength and ubiquity of CH bonds, the efficient and selective activation and hydroxylation of alkanes is difficult. Still, innovative methods which utilize transition metals or enzymes have been developed to overcome these challenges. While effective, these methods often utilize precious metal catalysts that require non-removable directing groups to give the desired reactivity and site selectivity. Additionally, strongly oxidative conditions are often required to promote the transformation which can result in overoxidation to the carbonyl in the case of secondary and primary sites. Enzymatic methods, such as using P450 enzymes, offer good selectivity for the alcohol and are site and enantioselective, but usually suffer from a limited substrate scope or require directed evolution for specific substrates. Metal and enzyme-free hydroxylation methods have also been reported, but again, are limited in scope and result in overoxidation of primary and secondary sites. Thus, a metal and enzyme-free method to hydroxylate alkanes is highly desired. Our lab has previously developed an oxygen transfer reaction using photoexcited nitroarenes for the oxidative cleavage of alkenes. In the proposed mechanism, the nitroarene is photoexcited at 390 nanometers to a triplet biradical excited state. This triplet biradical is then able to undergo a stepwise cycloaddition with the alkene to form a 1,3,2-dioxazolidine intermediate that upon fragmentation results in the cleavage products. Looking at this triplet biradical of the nitroarene, we questioned whether it could react with an alkane to promote a hydrogen atom transfer event to generate a carbon-centered radical which could then potentially react further with the nitroarene to result in an oxygen transfer event to give alcohols. Searching the literature, we found a limited number of examples showing this transformation's feasibility. Hamilton and later Severin both demonstrated that UV irradiation of nitroarenes resulted in oxygen transfer to a select number of alkanes. While limited in scope, they lend support that photoexcited nitroarenes are capable of promoting oxygen transfer to alkanes. Recently, Wang and co-workers reported visible light promoted intramolecular reactions of nitroarenes and, within their scope, demonstrated four examples of benzylic hydroxylation in high yields. They propose the reaction proceeds via an HAT event to generate benzylic radicals, which then get hydroxylated by the nitroarene to afford the products. Taking all of this into account, we hypothesized that photoexcited nitroarenes could be used to promote CH hydroxylation of alkanes, acting as both the HAT agent and the oxygen source. If successfully developed, this would result in a simple CH hydroxylation reaction under mild and anaerobic conditions utilizing commercially available nitroarenes. We started our investigations with benzylic systems, using indane as the model substrate. During the optimization of the oxidative cleavage work, it was found that electron-poor nitroarenes were the most effective, so an initial test reaction was carried out with 4 nitrobenzonitrile as the nitroarene, which resulted in a 60% yield of the desired indanol with 7% of the overoxidation product. After a quick solvent and wavelength screen, it was found that the reaction was most effective in DCM under 390 nanometer radiation. 
A wide range of nitro airings were then screened with a select few examples shown here. It was again found that electron poor nitro airings were the most effective for the transformation with 2-chloro-4-nitropyridine giving an 82% yield of the desired alcohol product with a 14% yield of the ketone overoxidation product. The formation of the ketone could be almost completely suppressed if HFIP was employed as a co-solvent, resulting in an increase of the alcohol yield to 92%. This is most likely due to the hydrogen bonding capabilities of HFIP, which can hydrogen bond to the oxygen lone pair of the formed alcohol product and suppress its oxidation to the ketone. Concurrently, a similarly extensive reaction optimization was performed on unactivated alkanes, and it was found that the 3,5-bis trifluoromethyl nitrobenzene shown above irradiated neat with the alkane resulted in the highest yields of the alcohol product. With optimized conditions in hand, we started investigations into the scope of the transformation. Cyclic substrates of various ring sizes were efficiently hydroxylated in moderate to good yields. Ethylbenzenes also performed well under the reaction conditions, with electron-rich and neutral ethylbenzenes being hydroxylated in good yields with little to no formation of the corresponding acetophenones. Electron-poor and halogenated containing substrates were also hydroxylated under the reaction conditions, albeit in lower yields. Primary benzylic also performed well under the reaction conditions, but required higher amounts of HFIP to suppress overoxidation to the aldehydes. Interestingly, when multiple equivalent sites were present on a substrate, only the singly hydroxylated product was detected, offering complementary reactivity to other hydroxylation methods, which produced the doubly hydroxylated product. One advantage of using mild and anaerobic conditions for the reaction is the ability to tolerate oxidatively sensitive functional groups. As shown above, a B-pin, free hydroxyl, and carboxylic acid were all tolerated under the reaction conditions, which would not be tolerated by many previously reported hydroxylation methods. When investigating substrates with inequivalent benzylic sites, a clear selectivity pattern was uncovered. Not only was the reaction selective for the singly hydroxylated product, but was also selective for secondary sites over primary sites, secondary sites over tertiary sites, and primary sites over tertiary sites, giving an overall selectivity pattern of secondary, then primary, and then tertiary. We next investigated the scope of the reaction for the unactivated substrates, using distal electron withdrawing groups to deactivate the methylene sites of straight chain alkanes the methine sites of various chain links were selectively oxidized in good to excellent yields. Hydroxylation of secondary sites on simple hydrocarbons was also achieved under the reaction conditions in good yields. As in the case with benzylic substrates, HFIP was again employed as an additive in the reaction of the secondary substrates to suppress the overoxidation to the ketones. We then moved on to more complex substrates to demonstrate the potential application of the method for late-stage functionalization. Bioactive molecules such as ibuprofen and estrone were successfully hydroxylated at their secondary benzylic sites. Additionally, salicylin, a bioactive natural product, and a precursor to herringtonine were also hydroxylated under the reaction conditions, highlighting the method's potential applications in total syntheses. After examining the scope, we turned our attention to understanding the mechanism of the transformation. We began with experiments to support that the triplet biradical of the nitroarine is promoting HAT of the alkane to generate a carbon-centered radical. Subjecting the radical clock shown here to the reaction conditions, we were able to detect the ring-opened naphthalene product in a 10% yield, suggesting that a carbon-centered radical is indeed being formed during the reaction. We then investigated the primary KIE of the reaction using an intermolecular competition study and found a KH over KD of 1.7, which is similar to previously reported CH hydroxylation methods, suggesting that the CH bond of the alkane interacting with the photoexcited nitroarine is a part of the rate-limiting step of the reaction. We then shifted our focus to investigating how the oxygen transfer between the nitroarine and the form carbon-centered radical is occurring. To detect any reaction intermediates that could be forming in the reaction, 
and to give us insight into the mechanism, we monitored the reaction of 2,3-dimethylbutane with the bis cf 3 nitroarene by in-situ photoNMR. During the course of the reaction, a second set of signals shifted slightly downfield from the product signals were detected growing in. We assign those peaks to the intermediate formed by the recombination of the alkyl radical and the nitroarene radical, which is shown in brackets, and the mass of this intermediate was confirmed by high-res mass spec analysis. This result lends support that oxygen transfer from the nitroarene to the alkane likely occurs via a radical recombination of the carbon-centered radical and the photoexcited nitroarene. Taking the radical clock, KIE, and photoNMR studies together, we proposed the following mechanism for the transformation. First, the nitroarene is photoexcited under 390 nanometer irradiation to the triplet biradical excited state. This triplet biradical is then able to promote HAT from the alkane to form a carbon-centered radical, which then rapidly recombines with the remaining oxygen-centered radical to form a recombination intermediate. This recombination intermediate then fragments into the desired alcohol product and a nitrosoarene. While the nitrosoarene was never detected directly in the reaction mixtures, the azo and azoxy products were detected at the end of the reaction, resulting from the dimerization of the formed nitroso byproduct. Overall, we were able to develop a practical, mild, and anaerobic method for the hydroxylation of alkanes utilizing commercially available nitroarenes. The method can tolerate a wide range of functional groups, has a predictable regioselectivity pattern, and is highly selective for the alcohol products over the carbonyl overoxidation products. Various mechanistic studies highlighted in this talk, along with others that I did not have time to mention, provided insight into the mechanism of the reaction and supports the bifunctional reactivity of the nitroarene as both an HAT agent and an oxygen source. With that, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and thank you, Matt, for inviting me to be featured on today's workshop. I would like to thank my PI, Marvin Parisram, as well as the other co-first author on this paper, Alana Duke, who worked on the optimization and scope of the unactivated substrates. I would also like to thank the other authors, Emma Gorganoyu and Dan Wise. If anyone has questions, feel free to reach out by email or connect with me on my Twitter. And once again, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Josh for sharing your work with us. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time!